this country, and this government, none of us applied for this job. None of us loved it for this job. And many I've spoken to have never met our principal, the president. We came here on the recommendations of those that think we can add value to this country. We left whatever we were doing to come and join this government for one reason and one reason alone. Because we believe in the message, in the message of this president, especially of ridding this nation of the cancer of corruption. That's why we left whatever it is we were doing and accepted positions in this government. When I came, what did I find? This agency has been around since, for the last 12, 13 years. Its mandate is clear. Universal healthcare coverage. What universal healthcare coverage means is that every Nigeria, all 180 million of us, to be covered by this agency so that when we go to hospital, this agency is correct. But the biggest mandate is that this agency should reduce the out-of-pocket spending for our people. We go to hospitals now, you pay 60 or 70 percent of whatever you charge. If you're not an NHS, out of your pocket. Another thing is to protect people and give them a net cushion from financial risk associated with major illnesses. Many of us, including your CCLA, we get seriously ill, God forbid, it wipes away our life savings. NHIS is there to give this financial risk protection. Supposed to. Many of us let's go back to our ancestral homes, get out of Abuja, Lagos, or the urban areas. Who have we left behind? Those we have left behind are the ones we call the vulnerable. The aged, widows or widowers, women and children, and the poor. Many, when they are sick, they don't go to hospital not because they don't want to. They don't go to hospital because they cannot afford to go to hospital. That's what NHI is supposed to do to help people go to hospital. I'm a pediatrician, I'm acutely aware of the fact that the largest population in this country are women and children. And I see the sufferings of our people. Children, especially children under five. Many are dying daily. Pregnant women dying in childbirth. Our data is atrocious. In spite of all our human and natural resources. We must do something. We do not have the luxury of time. There is this thing that Martin Luther King called the fierce urgency of now. That I don't see the fire in people. Our people are dying. We have an agency, the federal government has put money in trust on behalf of our people to pay for that. What I found here, so this is the story of the NHI. What I found was shocking. Shocking. I've had to. Because I came from academia, of course, we asked questions. I was carrying files and spending sleepless nights to find out about this agency. What has come into the NHS over the last 12, 13 years? What has it achieved? Who have benefited? Have we achieved our mandate? If not, why? Where are the problems? And how can we solve the problems? These are the questions I've been asking. These are the questions many interest groups in this country do not want me to ask. So I'm here. What I found, instead of 180 million Nigerians, we should always be covering, we covered 3 million. And even that three million, nobody can lift his holy scripture, be it the Bible, the Torah, or the Quran, and swear by that number. Why? Because this number has been falsified and padded. 
to the advantage of hegemons. They came from the United States where the land of hegemons. That's where they copied it and brought it here. When they copied it, they pasted it to their advantage, to the disadvantage of the little guy. And I've said it, do not copy if you don't know how to paste it. They copied it and pasted it to their advantage. It's, a, it's been, relatively speaking, it's been a failure in America. The universal health coverage isn't possible in America. Do you think it's possible in Nigeria? You see, it's not, that tells you... In Africa, not Nigeria, good. Africa actually. Good, that's very instructive. What that tells you is that it's not the resources, but how you manage the resources. Health indices in Cuba are better than that in the United States. Right? So it's how you manage the resources, not the money. I have seen how much money has come into the NHS and the result. Is it achievable? Can we do better? Yes, you bet. Absolutely. We can do a lot better than this. Now people are talking about UHC just like a song. We were young in medical school then when they say health for all by the year 2000. We are 18 years after and we are not there yet. Now UHC they are making it into a song. It's not a song. It's a very, very serious and solemn promise to our people that every person is entitled to good quality health care. It's not only a human right, but it's a tool towards poverty alleviation. So, but people are talking UHC, UHC without knowing what it is. It's a huge responsibility, I feel, every day of my waking hours on this chair. I am at an agency that can have impactful difference in the lives of our people. If, and only if, that potential is harnessed, has not been. When we're trying to clean the system and make it work for our people, Coming from the academia, coming from the outside world, first, did you experience Nigeria? And then, second, do you think you fit into the way things work in Nigeria? Nigeria is home. Wherever I go in this world, wherever anybody goes in this world, I feel more at home here than anywhere in the world. It's my route. It's where my people are. It's where I want to make the most difference to our people. The Nigeria I left several days ago is a different Nigeria, right? But every general goes to war with the troops he has. This is what I meant. This is what I will do. I will go. In whatever place you find yourself in this world, do the best you can and make a difference. This is the Nigeria of today, not the Nigeria of the 70s or 80s. It's dynamic. Every society is. And it's for us to say, why are we in this world? To accumulate wealth? What do you want to live? What will be your legacy here? What do you want to be remembered for? Making money or building houses? No. How will you touch the lives of others? That's why we went to medical school during my time. We could have, we were at that time the best and the brightest. We still are. We chose to go into this noble profession to make a difference in the lives of our people. And I thank God that I'm in a position now to make that difference. Is it easy? No. Is it doable? Yes. Will I do it? You bet. You're offering a service that is out of reach for most Nigerians and appears to be designed that way. Was any fires created to meet the needs of only a few? No, it wasn't. It was a very noble. When it was created at that time, it honestly was a noble idea. Everywhere in the world you go to, health insurance is for the rich to subsidize for the poor, for the strong to help the weak, and for those who are healthy to, to help those who are not. Because if I'm healthy or rich, I could contribute into this scheme for 30, 40 years. I'm not using it, somebody else would. A pregnant woman somewhere, a child somewhere, an aged woman somewhere. Everywhere in the world, including the United States, a very capitalist country, the rich subsidized for the poor. In the UK, I was there. We were taxed every month. And it's our taxes that fund the NHS. 
for the unemployed, for the poor. And that is what it's supposed to do. We all owe a responsibility to others. That's what insurance is about. The idea was noble, it still is. This agency has, has a huge potential to help our people. Has it been harnessed? No. Is it going to be harnessed? We are trying our best. And we do our best while we are on this chair. Okay, so what impact can the scheme really have considering that health services in a country are poor? Right. Let me tell you, in spite of all the failings of NHIS, and there are many, I'm the first chief executive in this place to draw the curtain and tell the world this is not how it should be. In spite of all our failures, and I'm not going to rattle that here, I've said that before several years, I will tell you the positive thing that NHIS has done. NHIS has increased access to healthcare to our people. Those who were in Abuja long before I came, long before NHIS, will tell you how the NHIS has increased access to our people to go to national hospitals. I was in Ilorin, a one the, the private practitioner, he owns the largest practice in, in, in Ilorin, sought to see me in my hotel room. He told me, and it was very good to hear, that Sahal, you are doing God's work. He said, you will appreciate that because you are a pediatrician. Let me tell you that. He said, the five biggest killers of children, we know as pediatricians, are number one, severe malaria, diarrheal illnesses, respiratory illnesses, illnesses that can be prevented by immunization and malnutrition. But we know common malaria does not kill children. What kills children are complications from malaria. Cerebral malaria, malaria of the brain, malaria that gives you diarrhea, that gives a child diarrhea and vomiting, malaria that gives a child anemia, or malaria that gives a child kidney problems. He said before the advent of NHIS, what I used to see was death from severe malaria from children. But now, sir, the incidence of death malaria in my practice has gone dramatically down. And he said, sir, the reason is one and one alone. Now mothers know they have access. They bring these children earlier on in the disease. Rather than previously, they will bring them to the force of death. Well, tell me why they have access, considering that most mothers are not part of the scheme. No, it's not that most mothers are not part of the scheme. And I will tell you how they are part of the scheme. Everybody thinks that NHIS is only for government employees. No, it isn't. We have a program in the NHIS called VC SHIP, Vital Contributor Social Health Insurance Program. What it is is for 15,000 naira per annum. Anybody can access health care as I would. If they are charged a million naira, any charge will pay. You can pay for many people back home. I can. Right? So we are so access to healthcare, access to the NHS is only is not restricted to government employees. We are talking about what good NHS has done in spite of all the beatings it's got. It's increased access. Nobody can deny that. It has reduced the cost of healthcare in this country. If you're NHIS and really you go to hospital, they charge you for a drug 1,000, you pay only 10%. NHIS pays for 99%. NHIS in this country sustains all federal hospitals, all state hospitals, all military hospitals, all police hospitals, and all major private hospitals. If NHIS was to pull, all these hospitals would collapse. So, the survival of NHIS as national security implication for very simple reason. We cover our men, our gallant men and women in uniform and their families while we send them to harm's way. We cover their families. We cover them. Without NHIS, the police that is the largest beneficiary of NHIS or the Army, or the Navy, or the Air Force, they are out there in harm's way for you and I to sleep with our two eyes closed. NHIS covers their family.
So NHIS has increased access, NHIS has reduced the cost of healthcare, NHIS sustains all federal, state tertiary hospitals, military hospitals and state hospitals. And sustainers and continuous survival of NHIS has national security implications. Have we done well? We are trying. We have a lot more to do. And I'm shaking the tree. Things are going to be done better than they have been in the past. Uh, the activities of NHIS have been crippled in the last few weeks over your suspension by the Governing Council. Is this a concern for you? They've not been crippled because I haven't left the NHIS. It was last Thursday the 18th. This was 10 days ago that the Governing Council purported to have suspended me. I never left my seat. Working continued as usual. There were people out there dancing. Did you see them when you came in? They got tired. And that is it. Public service in Nigeria is like contact sport. You take the hits and the bruises and stand up and move on. Previously, it used to bother me. Are you stolen this? 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 I used to not take some papers home because my wife gets worried when she reads it. I don't, I don't care anymore. So I'm here to do God's work, and I'm doing it. Nothing has been crippled, and the NHI's works continue. We continue to pay for the services of our patients out there in hospitals across all six geopolitical zones. When you came in, did you see any progress at the gate? No. We got tired of life. And if, if they want to shake me or intimidate me, they've chosen the wrong person. I'm here to work. Okay. I will. Okay, so this isn't the first time you've been suspended. The health minister carried out a similar action last year. The issues he raised have remained unresolved. Do you still see him as your supervisory minister? Or do you report directly to the presidency? No, no, no. How can I? Who am I to report to the presidency? The Honorable Minister of Health, when people start personalizing it, they do a great disservice to the issue. It's not about me or anybody. It's about our people. The Honorable Minister, I have no reason in this world to be disrespectful to him. He is my elder, both in age and professionally. His achievements in life are achievements I want to achieve. He is my supervising minister. We are academicians at the bedside of patients. We argue for the sake of patients. It doesn't mean it's personal. It's never been personal with me and my honorable minister and he will continue ever. Whether he's a minister, whether I'm here or not, he will always earn and deserve my respect. So people should not personalize it. It's not personal, we lose sight of the real issue. The real issue is our people. He will always be my supervising minister as the Honorable Minister of the Federal Ministry of Health.